Hey everybody, this is Dale from the Precept Classes in Cullman, Alabama, and we're looking at the last lesson of our series, How God is Searching for a Heart that is Fully After Him, uh, someone who is turned completely and totally and dedicated to the Lord. <clears throat> Uh, we're looking at part two of lesson five. There were so many things in this lesson this week that I thought we might do well to uh, do it in two parts and not feel hurried or harried. The last couple of things that we did in our homework this week was look at the first couple of chapters of Second Kings. And we're seeing what uh, happens with Ahab, his son, uh, the last days of Elijah and Elisha and what occurred there. So let's quickly look at this. In the first chapter of Second King, we see that Ahaziah, Ahab's son became king and he ruled uh, over Israel at the same time that Jehoshaphat was over in Judah. But Ahaziah only ruled for a couple of years. Apparently something happened. He fell through a lattice. Okay, Something occurred and he was gravely injured and he wanted to know if he was going to live. Rather than inquiring of the Lord, he sends out and messengers to inquire of Baal Zebub. And that was the name of a god. Uh, literally, we would call it Baal Zebub. So he sought of him rather than the Lord. Well, the Lord spoke to Elijah and said, Hey, I want you to go down and intercept those messengers, which Elijah did. And he literally said, Is there not a God in Israel that you can inquire of? And that really is a declaration unto us today. So often the things that we do, even within the body of Christ, we do it as if there is no God. We, we live in our nation as if there is no God. Those who are believers often go around whining and moaning as if there is no God. And so Elijah sent this question. Well, the messengers turned around and they went back to Ahaziah. And he said, uh, the king said, well, how'd you get back so quick? <laughs> and they said, well, we ran into this guy and here's what he said. Is there no God here in Israel? And he told us what's going to happen to you, that you're going to die. Well, Ahaziah wanted to know what the guy looked like and they described him. And he says, Miss Elijah. You can just hear him say it. And so he sent a captain with 50 men out to fetch Elijah. <coughs> Excuse me. And so this captain comes. They find Elijah there. And he calls him man of God. And uh, this was a, a term, of a detrimental term in the way he was using it, I believe. He said, man of God, come. And Elijah looks at him and says, if I'm a man of God, may fire from heaven come down and consume you. And boom, it happened. Fire from heaven consumed him. Well, they hear what happened. And sometimes people say, well, how do they hear what happened if they're all consumed? Well, we don't know, okay, for sure. But I highly suspect that it's quite similar to what we see today. Uh, whenever something like this would have uh, uh, been declared that somebody, a group was going out to get Elijah, you know that there would have been people who would have followed along, okay, to see what the news of the day was, to see what was occurring. So anyway, the news got back. The king sends a second captain with 50 men, and the same thing occurred. This time, the, the captain goes up and says, man of God, in that derogatory kind of way, come now. He's declaring, you know, under the authority of the king, you have no choice. It's that type of attitude. And Elijah says the same thing. If I'm a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you, which is exactly what occurred. Well, news gets back. A third captain with his 50 are sent out, but this captain was wise. And he comes for Elijah and he says, hey, please have mercy on me. Instead of coming along and demanding and dictating from an evil king, he says, have mercy upon me. Then the angel of the Lord uh, spoke to Elijah and said, go with him. Okay? So Elijah does and he declares to Ahaziah that you're going to die, and he does. And since Ahaziah had no son, his brother Jehoram becomes king. And at this point in time, we see that there's a Jehoram king over Israel, and there's also going to be a Jehoram king in uh, Judah at the same time. So we get to 2 Kings chapter 2. And Elisha uh, goes with Elijah. He goes with him from Gilgal to Bethel to Jericho, then to Jordan. And it looks like Elijah's trying to get rid of him because he tells him, he says, the Lord has told me to go to this city here, so you can stay right here. Every time Elijah said, no, no, no I'm staying with you. Uh, Elijah, uh, Elijah had been with Elijah for quite a while, had been serving him, had been helping him. And Elisha knew that Elijah was going to be taken that day. Elijah knew, Elisha knew, and the sons of the prophets in a couple of these towns, Bethel and Jericho, knew what was about to occur. And you say, well, how do they know? The word of the Lord had told them, okay? And so Elisha also knew that he was to replace Elijah. He had followed him, he had helped him, he knew what to expect. And so when Elijah asked Elisha what he wanted, Elisha said, I need a double portion of what you've got. He's basically saying, there's no way that I'll be able to do this unless I have uh, the anointing you have and a double portion of it. Elijah and Elisha's ministry, and, and I use that word like that because it's such a misused and abused word because we sort of want to put people up on a pedestal and say, well, they are in the ministry. And uh, that is just totally, absolutely wrong in my eyes. I know what people are saying. I know what they mean by that. 
But if you are a believer in the Most High God, if you've called upon the name of the Lord and you are saved, uh, then you are functioning within the same realm, uh, whether somebody's called to a full-time vocation or whatever. Uh, we are all servants of the Most High God. So these two servants of the Most High God did some things. They spoke forth the word of the Lord. They were men of prayer. Uh, the Lord did miracles through them, and I say that that way because from our perspective, it is miraculous when we see water parting and things like that. But from God's perspective, it's just simply God being God. So really, by definition, there is nothing that is a miracle per se. There's things that step outside the way that God designed something, but he's doing it. And so uh, I just want us to understand that it's simply God doing amazing things and doing what he desires in and through men. And if you remember what we learned about Elijah, who were just like us. They were just like us. So we see here that Elijah did not die. The Lord God took him up to heaven in the whirlwind, and Elisha was there and saw it. <clears throat> and that had been part of the promise that Elijah had said. He said that you will receive a double portion if you see whatever is going to occur. And so Elisha grieves, really, for Elijah. He cries out because he's gone. The mantle literally falls down. Elisha picks it up, comes back, He's got to cross the Jordan to get back to Jericho. And he slaps the water and he says, where is the God of Israel? It wasn't a point of doubt. It was a declaration of faith. And the water parted. And the prophet saw it. And they went, oh man, the spirit of Elijah is now on Elisha. So Elisha comes into the city right there. And, and the prophets were saying, this is a great place. It's beautiful right here and all this kind of stuff. But the water is impure. And so Elisha calls upon the name of the Lord. Uh, pours a little salt in there, and the water was purified. Then as Elijah is traveling, he's cursed by these mocking kids. And there's a large group of them because uh, it, they were making fun of him, and they were calling him, hey, old oh, bald head, old oh, bald head, that kind of thing. So Elijah turns around and curses them in the name of the Lord. I don't know what all that means. Uh, he, he, I think he just, whatever he said, it was a curse in the name of the Lord. Immediately, two she-bears, as the King James says, comes out and attacks these guys and really mauls, I think it was 42 of them. Uh, we don't know if they died or not. It didn't say that it killed them or if they died. Uh, the assumption is they died, uh, but uh, the kids were sent fleeing, I guarantee you. Then Elijah travels to some other places and he returns to Samaria. What we see is that the power uh, of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord was now upon Elijah. Uh, Elijah, the Lord, we learn some things in some cross-references in Malachi and Matthew, and there's a bunch of other places in the scripture. But with Elijah, the Lord will send Elijah again before the day of the Lord, the great and terrible day of the Lord. He'll restore hearts in Israel at that time. I know people quite often ask, and even the disciples ask, you know, uh, it was uh, John the Baptist Elijah and Jesus said that he would have been and he could have been, the idea being that if the Jews had believed that Jesus was Messiah, then John the Baptist would have been functioning as Elijah. There's some intriguing things about that which we don't have time to get into right now. In the meantime, I just want to thank you for staying with us in these five lessons. Uh, we're going to take a, a little break, but we will resume. If, you, if you're if you watching this on the internet uh, years later, uh, you will not know that, but we're going to continue with the next part of this series, uh, The Kings and Prophets. It'll be course number three, and it literally deals with Elijah. So in the meantime, y'all keep pressing on in the Lord. And I'm Dale, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.